Done. I should. Okay. Welcome to second meeting for our trustees, August uh, 19th. Three trustees, uh, fiscal officer, road administrator. Oh, I feel so cramped in here. I don't know. If the, the, it's either the little table or we move the stuff up. Right? Uh, yeah, I think you guys should stay here. <laughs> it is a little table that we one. Yeah. Had a bunch of CDR stuff on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got a few things to adopt. We have minutes of July 15th. Uh, let's do that one first. Do I have a motion to adopt July 15th minutes? I would make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. And this one that you said was not there. there. I will second. Any further discussion regarding those those minutes being adopted? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. And I entertain a motion to adopt um, minutes of August 5th, 2019. I so move. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And I would just like to mention that uh, we do have a um, certified sign, whatever, uh, of the August 16th public hearing for the 2020 budget. <coughs> okay, let's move along to approval of payment of bills of $242,739.91, broken down five seventy four thirty one out of the general fund, well, that's a whopper, uh, mm -hmm. $17,885.43 from the fire cemetery, none. EMS billing 77 dollars uh, Road Bridge, $10,675. That's a lot of asphalt. That's a lot of asphalt we bought. Um, uh, motor vehicle license, 559 Gas tax, 6985 Road Bridge, 3130 Permissive zero. And capital project, 4901 <sighs> More ads in the papers of records, $5,819.74. Down the tubes. I move uh, approval of the payment of those bills listed. Mr. Hollister moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. Second. Any further discussion regarding payment of those accounts? <coughs> Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Correspondence for the period. Um, let's take that up under something. I had a question. Well, wait, and I'll ask it when you read off the title. Or okay, or okay, whichever. But get to it. Um, if I don't get to it, then you can't. Or, okay. Uh, <laughs> notice from NBRPC on a uh, sustainability roundtable uh, coming up August twenty eighth. Copy of a uh, letter and resolution about a clean Ohio fund support letter, which we'll take on, up under new business. That was my question. Okay. Um, you want to ask it, or you want to wait till we get to it? <coughs> I was wondering how it had gotten in there if we hadn't voted on it, but we have. It's for us to vote on. Okay. Right. A copy of the uh, fiscal sponsor grant agreement between. Uh, the Ellsbury's Community Foundation and the Ellsbury's Community Development Corporation, of which we are a participant. A copy of a mutual aid agreement between Xenia Township and us that Xenia Township asked to have us uh, sign so they could uh, uh, file it with their FEMA, with their FEMA request for reimbursements and. Uh, and there may be a couple of pennies in there for a good old Miami Township. For the so we were just talking about that a week or two ago about mutual aid and how we didn't, we mm -hmm. used to have contracts, but then we mm -hmm. kind of all just decided to work together anyway. But well, that's paper, but now. <laughs> FEMA, FEMA won't pay us, pay us anything unless we've got a mutual aid, so that's why uh, they were Alan following mm -hmm. up on that. Um, message from Melissa Howell, the Health Department about two members that are uh, going to be, their terms are going to be up this year, and she's looking for some advice on that. 
Uh, message from the village of Yellow Springs. Uh, oh yeah, the village manor, manager, Josue Salaron, uh, has invited me to become a member of the uh, steering committee for their comprehensive land use plan update. I said, depends on if the bids come in uh, under budget or on budget. And he said he'd wait to see. You mean you'll be too busy if? If they don't, yes, I will be too busy. I will be too busy. Around the rest. We start farming the appropriations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 2018 annual report from the Ohio Township Association Risk Management Authority. Uh, some information about new firehouse stuff, which I think we'll do all at once after. Is that the addendum stuff? Yeah. I think. Yeah. A quote from Jason Thunderberg uh, to make the sign, the construction sign, you know, it's got to include the USDA seal and everything. Um, so there's a company in three companies in Springfield, but the, the least expensive one, I said, what the heck? Why not go for the cheapest, since I've used them for our sign for the Grinnell Mill, where it says, welcome to the Grinnell Mill, our sign for the uh, cemetery that's on the, the maintenance, the rules and regulations, those two signs. Oh. I think some other signs these guys made for us, and, and they've held up well, and it's a nice quality. Uh, Route 40. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. they did signs for us, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have the state park. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the addendum number three, the last one, I guess it would be the last one, even though we've extended the we've extended the bids for uh, an additional week till August 28th, but a very nice thin one page. We had to add Stanley door hardener door hardware as an approved manufacturer. The first one, which had like 22 pages worth. Yeah, they all were. Yeah, they all were. Okay. That's all I have. Anyone else have various or sundry correspondence? Tiny, tiny homes or anything? Oh, I didn't see it. Hmm. Was that? Wasn't there somewhere? <laughs> Wouldn't we just pass that on to our? Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we we did. It has been passed. But I just it was it was an interesting little um, interesting little message. Someone is looking to buy property in uh, Miami Township and put a tiny home on it. Which I'm not sure it really matters whether it's a tiny home, but whether it meets the requirements of the you know the parcel. Uh, it's not going to be hooked up to public sewer or water. Although we don't require that in cultural district, but I'm not sure the health department will <coughs> sign off. On, that's why I sent it to Richard. I'm not sure the health department will sign off on on a home that doesn't have either of those. I mean, homes are required to have water. I know that they're not required to have sewer, but they have to have a water source. Uh, and I'm not sure if some tank on the back of the tiny home qualifies. So I wasn't going to give it. For that. Um, and I'm not sure what the rest of it was, but it sounded interesting, self-contained, completely self-contained. It was also on wheels on a trailer, and I know we don't generally uh, permit homes, mobile homes, and that doesn't follow, un fall, I don't think that follows, follows, falls under manufactured housing because manufactured housing traditionally may come on a trailer but it gets put on a foundation. Uh, this sounds like it stays on wheels. So uh, we'll have to ask Richard the next time he's here. <coughs> and, uh, he told the gentleman. Did I miss anything else, Margaret? Mm -hmm. well, tax exempt mm -hmm. status. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have that. Yes. Fundraising opportunity for. Um, <laughs> well, okay. You, you want to say anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. No, no, everything. Okay. <laughs> Let's move to the fire department. Oh, okay.
or somebody else's cup. Okay. Oh, mine. Yeah. All right. Well, since our last, <coughs> since last meeting of the board, there have been 38 EMS incidents, 15 fire, and then six fire safety inspections. You're slacking off since the yeah. last one was what 65? Oh my gosh! Thank God. Um, Saturday night crews rescued a, an injured climber from John Bryan State Park. It's uh, a 15-year-old female patient. She was learning how to repel. Oh no! And ended up falling about 20 feet and oh, flying, God. which only suffered minor injuries, relatively minor. Um, so it took the guys, I think about an hour, to get to her and get her packaged up and removed out. Um, that's the third one we've had in the park this summer. Was she busted up much? Or? No, they said she was, for what happened to her, she was actually pretty, <laughs> so pretty lucky. Were all those climbing? Cl uh, cliff related incidents. They're not necessarily <coughs> trying to climb. Right, I think that's the only one that was actually climbing there too, where uh, oops, got too close to the edge. Mm -hmm. Apparently the big signs that the state has put up that says, no climbing. dangerous, <laughs> cliffs ahead, don't mm -hmm. really need much. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, was she like repelling down or something? Like yeah, she was days? learning to repel, I think she started to go over the edge and then... So she didn't get so hurt. Her she harness didn't... wasn't secured mm -hmm. or something is what I was talking about. I don't even think you could climb it, you could do that anymore. Yeah, there's certain areas they like. She was actually in an authorized area. They had a permit to be there the whole night. So wow. that was nice. So, um, but there was an issue with the harness because the ODR officers apparently impounded the harness. So oh, really? that's too much for what was going on with that. Um, and then this morning, crews responded to a reported building fire at the tavern. Arrival, they found a uh, small fire, small breeze fire in the kitchen. Uh, it was quickly extinguished. No, 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 no major damage or even significant damage other than to some kitchen equipment. And then probably be closed a couple of days. Got everything fixed and put back in order to be part of the rules. So. Yeah, I very good luck with fires over there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's still standing, so in that way, <laughs> <laughs> that good luck. Sure. It's just, yeah, pretty good. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I've given you resolution 2019-27, mm -hmm. which is hiring with a part-time employee, um, Justin Turner. Justin is he's an outsider. Uh, but, <laughs> well, I mean, everyone else we've been putting in part-time positions has been one of our volunteers, but uh, he's from Wellington. Very familiar with the Yellow Springs area. Um, this would be a long response time. Yeah. His mom was the... Uh, Camp nurse at Camp Clifton when he was a kid, so he was there every summer. Mm -hmm. uh, loves Yellow Springs, has a very Yellow Springs attitude, more so than any of my current guys. Uh, but I think he'll fit in really well. He's a firefighter in the MTV. He really wants to work here. So. Is this one of the 24 hour shifts? Or? I think he'd be working 12s uh, to help fill in. So, so this is not a bonus, signing bonus position? Uh, I'd have to figure that out. Once we schedule him, well, I mean, if he's going to do 24, a 24 hour shift, then mm -hmm. we would get the bonus. Mm -hmm. the bonus so. um, but yeah, I mean, he's older. He's 35, I think, 34, 35. He speaks five languages. Okay. Five really? language. You want him to see your belly in? <laughs> no, but should we have um, some kind of mass incident at the Dharma Center? It might come in handy because he speaks Nepalese. Bhutanese, two dialects of Tibetan. No way. And, and then Hindi. English. And English. Yeah, he lived in India for a while, so. What are his uh, licenses? His 12 pages? Firefighter uh, 1, 2, 3. Firefighter 1 and EMT. Okay. He also works uh, a part time shift for Clinton Township. Clinton Township? Yeah, that's right. That's how it works. Yeah, it's one down on 3 yeah. and um, And works for uh, Clinton Medical Transport. Okay, I would look for a uh, motion to adopt resolution 2019-27. Virus continuing to need to exist to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department. Virus just in turn is required to demonstrate all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of part-time firefighter EMT for the fire rescue department. And whereas Chief Alderman has recommended the appointment of this candidate 
whereas funds are available for the purpose within the department's operating budgets, and therefore be resolved that Justin Turner shall be appointed to the position part part time firefighter EMT within the fire rescue department, effective today. Is there a motion? I would make that. Mr. Hockett, second. Mr. Hollister, second. Any further discussion regarding resolution 2019-27 adoption? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Uh, <laughs> more. Uh, the Clifton Ice Cream Social was once again the hit of the summer social season in Clifton. Uh, we had a good crowd. They ate a lot of hot dogs and a lot of ice cream, so it was a little warm. But uh, the ice cream was mainly soup. <laughs> and there was a little rain. A little bit of rain. And that uh, didn't, didn't little pie hut there that we, got that we serve from gets uh, a little toasty. <laughs> and so we never really had a hot one. Uh, in the but everyone seemed to have a really good time and people were happy. Excellent. Uh, and then coming up Tuesday, September 17th, we're doing an open house, probably a mobile open house because it's not going to be here. But it'll be at Twin Towers Park in Bath Township uh, for Bath Township residents and uh, working with the, the board of trustees over there. Steve about that. This is a way to introduce ourselves to them. He was doing their uh, State of the Township newsletter. Um, they were going to send out to everyone. So he's going to talk about the fire contracts and then put that in there. So. What time is it? Uh, it'll be probably 6 30 or 7 o'clock to 8 30. Probably do hot dogs. I don't think they will pie hot, so we can also do ice cream. <laughs> hot dogs, association with someone in a bouncy house. Go big since it's our first time. <laughs> For the grown ups, is it a bounty house? That would be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and then I'm going to request the personnel. Bye. Executive session. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, for matters of personnel regarding termination of personnel. All right. That would be uh, 720, or excuse me, 720, 520. We get used to this time change yet. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll make that one. Let's try it. Oops. I'll second the motion to go into executive session. And all in favor? All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. We're back in public session. Um, Notice of decisions before personnel have been notified. That somehow that doesn't seem right. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess we could go and say the board has approved the chief's recommendations for uh, personnel action, and we concurred. Yes, no, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds terribly good. And, and the normal is just to not be <coughs> done. The termination wouldn't be done by motion. No. Oh, I'm not sure. They do everything like this. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> okay. I've never, never been involved in this before. Yeah, we don't typically do this. It's everything works. So. <laughs> the sun sets in the west. Yep. Okay, so anything else for um, our department this evening? That's all I got. Okay, anything for the fire department? Mark Donna? Nope. Okay, let's move to new firehouse report. A um, couple of things of interest. One, the major one would be uh, we have agreed to postpone the opening of bids for, for seven days. So it will now be 1 p.m on uh, August 28th, right here. We also have scheduled uh, a, a meeting with the architects here at 1 p.m. on Wednesday. And I'm just gonna reconfirm that necessity just simply based on what the amount of work we may have to review and uh, the cost that it is for us to uh, pay to have all these architects transform themselves here. Um, and I had planned to come to the meeting mm -hmm. uh, when there was going to be a bid opening. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I'll be leaving the meeting in Hamilton in order to arrive here by one. Mm -hmm. uh, so they only wait about half of the program 
Don't, don't, don't leave early on this account. Okay, that's what I was asking. Uh, I don't see anything of substance <laughs> other than a brick, reviewing a brick color. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know we were still reviewing them, but... But wouldn't those be in the... Uh, addendum? Addendums. Um, Apparently they'd have to have another addendum because this just came in today and it was not in last week's addendum. So I don't know, maybe this will be a, um, an additional addendum this week because it states it has to the, the final addendum has to be put out Friday before bids. And so I guess we do have another Friday um, coming up before the bids are done on Wednesday. Well, if you get any new information, let me know. Otherwise, I'll plan to not rush back. Okay, well, I should know what would be on a potential agenda tomorrow that I'll send out. Okay, so there's that. Uh, I'm trying to think in order of stuff we did. Well, that's the taxation. That's not the farms. We had a bit of a hiccup last week in our uh, financing of the new firehouse. Um, we had uh, arranged for a bridge loan of uh, $350,000, which wasn't really a bridge loan because there wasn't a, it wasn't collateralized. Uh, we were going to add that to the, to the base bid available funds and pay it back, uh, loan, borrow that money, and then pay it back with the sale of this building as soon as uh, we knew a, a construction date, which is coming up, hopefully. And so I was trying to get all our little paperwork uh, straightened out for that to make sure that Ashley Kelly would have it in hand before he uh, would allow us to sign a contract for bids, which would have been somewhere in the September 5th, 10th range. Uh, we just found out that Mike Davis, the architect in Columbus that has to approve any of the of the bids packages it has to usda approve them and then they get kicked back to us for uh, award awards of the bids he's on vacation till september 4th so whatever we get on the 28th or whatever we would have gotten on the 21st was going to sit in a mailbox until at least the fourth and then um, mike would get back and review them and let us know so anyway, we wouldn't have awarded that bid until sometime after that. So anyway, um, I worked with the bank and everything was a go and the underwriters approved it and this, that, and the other thing. And they just sent it to their lawyers to, to work up the legal documents uh, to have us all signed. And it came back with, it came back from the lawyers, it was, well, there was lawyers, with half a dozen questions about what type of loan is it, what type of general obligation, what type, is this an open loan or a closed loan, or is this a, I said, okay. And they wanted a letter from our bond council, council, uh, answering, all our, answering all these questions. Well, we don't have a bond council, I mean we did, but we closed that account when we got the 575, but I called Brad Brewery back up, said, you want to be bond counsel again for for a day? Bond counsel for a day because it was at the time I felt it was important to get that information as quickly as possible if it was accurate information, if it was you know the way it was supposed to be, to these lawyers for the bank so that they could assess it and give us this yay or nay because if we had to go somewhere else for this 350, that would have been some mighty fast shuffling around looking for. Uh, looking for loan money. Yeah. So he was most gracious, and we talked for a long time, he was most gracious, Margaret can attest to that, he was most gracious in uh, going through where we were, what our options were. Please don't ask me for all the technical details of it because half of that stuff was right over my head. But the bottom line was he was uh, offering to write the letter uh, with um, with all the legal 
reasons why, yes, we were we were in enabling enabled by the state legislature to borrow money from financial in institutions under certain circumstances, and we qualified for all those circumstances. And letters in here somewhere. I think it's probably right in there somewhere. Um, and the letter was then sent to the uh, bank's lawyers, and they looked at it and said, yeah, no problem. This looks exactly like what we wanted to know. And so as of Friday night at about 4.30, Friday evening about 4.30, we were pretty much back on the track to be assured that this money would be available. And that's where we are now. We're waiting for the little different nuts and bolts of the of the terms of the loan, the interest rates, you know, all of that sort of stuff to be put down on paper and then it'll come to us and, and we'll approve it. And then we'll send it off to USDA and uh, we'll make them happy. <coughs> so that's that was you know, that was part of the fun of last week. I think this is the letter here, Mark. I don't know if you saw it. There's um, there's uh, two or three things that we have to do very similar, unfortunately, to what we did the last time. We're going to have to pass enabling legislation, which is uh, in here. I think we're going to need a resolution number for that, which is probably going to be 30. If we're going to pass that enabling le legislation this evening. Um, come on, let's go away. And then, uh, then we'll be all set for that. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, in addition to that interesting uh, stuff, it got me thinking well, that it's really time to start seriously figuring out what we're going to do with this building and how quickly we can turn it around because we're going to be paying substantial interest on the 350 every single month that we hold on to it. And as you may or may not know, there are really only three ways to dispose of this building. One is a public auction, uh, another is a, um, a sealed bids, and a third would be to, to sell slash transfer it to a uh, third party like a CIC or a CDC, which we just happen to have one. Uh, handy at the moment. So, if we, you know, we can't really do the, I mean, we could do the public auction and we could do the, um, the sealed bid, but uh, we probably have to wait a little while. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but we'd have to be able to obviously stay in the building until we ha had uh, occupancy of the new one. And one way or the other, um, if we sold it contingent upon occupancy, uh, that really doesn't that re that doesn't really help us in getting out of the the three fifty uh, loan as quickly as possible. Because we'd be paying somebody one way or the other, either yeah, interest on the loan or rent for here. Yeah. So, um, in theory, the best way to do it in my opinion, at least from what I've learned so far, and I, I got a lot more to learn about what you can do and can't do with DCICs, and you being an old DIC man, you know, you probably know all these regulations just right off the top of your head from. <laughs> they may have been changed. Um, but anyway, if we could transfer, if we could sell it to the CDC, Three fifty, four hundred thousand dollars, whatever. Because we, of course, we'd have to have appraised, but yeah, I'm sure it'd be sure to bring that much. If we could sell it, then we'd still have to start paying rent to them, but they could start to resell it almost immediately. Um, now, what conditions we would be able to put on the resale, or who, you know, who we'd like to see, not a particular individual, but what types of uh, businesses or use of the building, you know, we could probably put part of that on, you know, clauses in the deed, in the deeds, or not the deeds, but the uh, purchase agreement, and also um, something like 
again, I kind of have to go over the legalities of this. Our new DIC lawyer, who I think we have an appointment to discuss this on Wednesday, is potentially say, we're going to sell this to you for $350,000. However, if you turn around and when you sell it, if you get more than 10%, 15% or some number, uh, then we would like to have that difference uh, returned to us. I think we could do that. Um, and we certainly would want the DCIC to, to, have, a, uh, to have a little nut of their own. So those are, you know, those are a lot of little details that have got to be worked out. But we're going to have to start working on it because we, we want to uh, potentially turn this over as quickly as possible. So what I'm interested in is either of your feedbacks for which way you think is the best way to dispose of the, of the, of the building uh, in the best you know, way possible instead of I'm just concerned about putting it out for auction highest bid and you get, you know, Hustle Hollywood or Hooters or something like that uh, who makes you an offer and you can't refuse. You're being prejudicial now. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mark, do you have anything? Or I launch? launch. Uh, <laughs> no. Are we flipping a switch? <laughs> Uh, do you want? I, uh, you know, certainly someone could bring me other information that would change it, but I, I would go along the lines of, of working with the CDC, CIC, uh, and I felt like you were reading my mind in the description of how we uh, might uh, have a you know, contingency if uh, a surprising, if it transferred for a surprising amount, then mm -hmm. we get some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, a factor in that could be instead of our paying direct rent, it, it, could, it could be a percentage, depending on how long we occupied, that that, pro that potential profit margin share mm -hmm. could change. Mm -hmm. uh, But, as I understand, I mean, a key in CDC, or the CIC uh, part of it is that there be an existing economic development plan that's being followed, mm -hmm. that the political entities that are merged in this, or whose interests are merged in the community improvement mm -hmm. uh, Corporation have endorsed. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. We will have that. We will have by our next meeting. We will have um, bylaws to con to consider. We'll have them before the meeting, and hopefully we'll consider them before the meeting, and then we will either adopt them or or recommend changes. This is beyond the bylaws. This is this is a, uh, and I don't know what the. How specific the law says, but um, the reason we're behind this organization is because we share certain, as of yet unstated, uh, economic priorities. Some of those, maybe not to your satisfaction or what you're thinking of, are stated in the bylaws, okay. the Constitution and bylaws. It seems to me it would be unusual to put them in, in that part of it, but okay. Yeah, but maybe. It's just that. That type of requirement specifically has not been brought up in any of the, the organizational meetings, and you'd think that the the lawyer's record to this point, you know, would have said, you know, you're going to need to crank up a economic plan or something, but maybe they just oversaw it or you know didn't. I mean, well then let's let's I put it differently. Uh, whether or not it's required uh, by the CIC lawyer, I think we would. Say, hey, you know, we want we want this to contribute to uh, downtown mm -hmm. remaining a, a, a vibrant retail center or mm -hmm. and social center, mm -hmm. uh, which would be. So, does that mean that this becomes a parking lot? Does it mean 
become in other restrictions, uh, or you know, could it be an apartment building? Uh, that that we we should have some consideration of that. Um, okay. Um, I'll work on that. But I mean, and that's part of the reason for not having to go to auction. Okay, but without getting too much in specifics, I just want to make sure that I've got a feel for both of you that this is a direction to go down uh, until we hit a wall or some other reason to. Well, it marks on this Economic direction. Sustainability Commission. Mm -hmm. And I, I must say that. Uh, that this is the best way to proceed. The idea that uh, somebody would buy the building outright and take us off of the, uh, the hook, so to speak, would be... Uh, well, we'd still be on the hook until they, until they resold it. Right. Because we would be paying the principal and interest payments as mm -hmm. rent for the amount of time that they have it because the CIC, excuse me, the CIC has no source of income mm -hmm. uh, on their own. Now, I guess I should say that the CIC is a financial, or the, the Yale Springs Foundation is a financial sponsor of the CIC. So, up until the point where CIC decides to break that relationship with the foundation. The foundation's finances are CIC's finances, in theory. You can use their assets as collateral, and we can use their reputation or, or, or whatever to, to borrow money, which is what we have to do in order to in order to the CIC to borrow money. So, which is, which is really great, because we couldn't do it on our own, obviously. Even though we collateralize it with the building, um, it's just too young. Well, I am, I, I just summarize, I'm in favor of pursuing the CIC okay. option. All right, great. Well, then we shall do that. Um, and the only offer that we've had for the building was just from the restaurant in yeah, and, and again, it's just you, you got to keep in mind. It's it's nice to have interest and nice to have. Well, it wasn't really an offer because mm -hmm. I don't think there was any money. But we can't legally sell it to a, to one specific individual. We have to put it out on the open market mm -hmm. unless it gets transferred to a CIC, um, and we can't dictate who they sell it to. But within a certain parameter, a potential buyer may fit within you know. A, a good fit for mm -hmm. the community as determined by the CIC with perhaps a little guidance for us but we can't say you know we're selling this to the CIC and you've got you then have to sell it to Joe Blow's you know trinket right. shop sort of thing mm -hmm. but if we say you know we'd like to have trinket shops you know in, in theory we'd like to have a big old trinket shop in here and it just so happens that Joe Blow's you know waiting out in the wings mm -hmm. you know Trinkets are plenty. Trinkets are us. Nice. <laughs> All right. Look forward to that. Trinkets. Really creative. Uh, that's my middle name. It's creative. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to read a, a very small portion of this because we've already, although uh, Don may not have because of his news, everybody else has been here with different numbers in this exact same language. But I'm going to read just the uh, enabling part of it. Um, so the Board of Trustees, Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, met today at time, etc. So the following members present, that's us. And someone's going to move the adoption of the following resolution, number 29, uh, 2019-30. This is a resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of a principal amount of not to exceed $350,000 limited tax fire station improvement general obligation bond anticipation note. Series 2019 for the purpose of paying the cost of fire station improvements and matters related thereto. 
Okay, and then there's lots of whereases and a few wherefores, and a therefore to be resolved, but the basic thing is it's the declaration of necessity to put this out uh, in the market so that our financial institution can, uh, can, can pick it up, and by picking it up, then they will issue the note for $350,000 to us uh, with the uh, no collateral. And what's the interest rate? Four or five. I haven't got the total yet. So, oh, I actually they're estimated it at no more than five. Um, is there a motion for adoption of resolution 2019-30? So moved. Mr. Hollister moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Crock seconds. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Here, then may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Um, you might, at your leisure, uh, this is the letter that they wrote to us for us to give to the financial um, institution to talk about how a uh, township can uh, take on obligations of, of financial debt um, within certain uh, within certain limits, and that we qualify to do that within limits. And David Graham has already certified that we fall within that amount. Um, we then have an engagement letter to uh, for the bond council himself, and it's usually a it's, it was. A, it's usually a percentage, and last time it was, and we talked about, talk about it on the phone, and let's see if it's any different than what we talked about. It's always the last page. Um, Thousand plus hundred dollar fee for transcripts. Um, we know it's up to uh, nine hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. So, as with the last time we used Dinsmore, these people are dirt cheap for what we're getting. It's just. Were you here when they did the the, the levy justification work? I don't think so. Well, basically, it was we put a levy on the ballot to build a new firehouse, but did not put a ballot, levy on the ballot that said firehouse and administration. And in theory, we may not have been able to move in there if you know somebody wanted to pursue it that much. Well, they offered to go down a very long road, a very long legal road of um, of looking up all these codes and, and trying to figure out what the best way was, and then we had to take it to court, and then we had to have a magistrate sign off of it, and then we had to have, I don't know, the governor and the tax <laughs> commissioner and everybody else had to sign off on it, and, and they did all that at no additional charge for what they were charging us to secure the bond for the 575. So that was pretty amazing, because we expected a big old chunk. Mm -hmm. Says, oh, don't worry about it. We do that for everybody. What's up? Okay. Nice. And unusual. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Otherwise, we're going to have to have told them every time you guys came in. Yeah. That's yeah. like, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, we're a fire chain of forms. <laughs> okay. So, anything else for the new firehouse? Not me. Okay. <laughs> Sexton, Hilkenauer? Present. Which guy? Since the last meeting, we've had three barrels. We had one in Clifton and two in Clifton. Mm -hmm. That's about all the action we've had. So, I know it's had a little break. Mm -hmm. We've been pretty busy for a minute. Let's see, did you sell a bunch of stuff between now and the last meeting, or was that before last before meeting? Before last meeting. It was before? Mm -hmm. okay. I, sold, I sold another one since the last meeting. Uh, sold one last Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I, I, actually, I sold one in Clifton, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of black yeah. I sold it quite a bit though earlier. Yes, you did. Um, I ain't going to turn this in there and put them before Labor Day holiday. 
So we're going to vote it not only this week, but either next week or eight months. Mm -hmm. All of it comes up to. Grass not exactly growing. It's kind of spotty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's more, if I'm not, it's going to be brown. Mm -hmm. Just like, it'll be a little rain it's going to be Yeah, towards the end of the week, they're talking a little rain. And they should be in the chip for sealed up cemetery, including pretty soon. So you know, they let grass pop back up, so let's run over it. Mm -hmm. Try to knock it down a little bit. What did you fill the hole with? Cold patch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much did it take? Five gallon buckets, maybe. Is that right? It wasn't that bad. We knocked it down. Mm -hmm. We packed it in. Packed it in. It's in pretty good. It should be all right. I thought, you know, they'd try it. It was just a hole right there. Are we still talking about a. a Workshop on monument repair in the fall. Uh, I've been in contact with them. She's supposed to call back. Uh, the dates we had, I guess, were fine, but she had to come back. But what dates are we talking about? It was the end of September, around the 24th, after the 20 something. I thought they'd like to be around for street fair. Yeah, that's so what that that was the second week of October. Well, yeah, yeah the, their so first week was the last, like last week of October. And the second choice was then, and she was going to talk with Wolf, and I had her. But it was, so I'll, I'll, I'll call her. I'll, I'll call Mickey. Good. Not that I don't want to answer to the Okay. What's going on in the roads? Well, we got our wedding all done. Mm -hmm. And we on Chip Seal. They should be in this week or for some there. We've already put some loose stone signs up that we see it. Mm -hmm. So she told me they'd be in soon. So hopefully. You're going to do a tanyard and hill for your own stuff like mm -hmm. um, I'm working on the roads. Mm -hmm. Trying to get my ditches moved and trim back. School starts this week. Yeah, I seem to remember at our last meeting, I had gone through a fairly long list of Fairly long list of roads you did. that would be trimmed and wedged and Yeah, you said all of them. Yeah. <laughs> like every road. Mm -hmm. And you said two weeks, they'll all be done. Did I say two weeks? Uh -huh. So, so I, I still got time. <laughs> you do? So anyway, I was out yesterday and looking and it looks like Houston Hyde, both sides, Spillane, Glen Drive, Glenel, Circle, Larkins, Harvest, South River, Kyle, North River. Uh, North, North, North South. River's been done. North River? Mm -hmm. There's probably some in the low, low bottom that is just growing back up, but it's been, it's been trimmed. Okay, I'll give you that one. Um, swimming pool needs trimmed, not mowed, and Brian Park needs whatever Brian Park needs. So you still, you've got a few, few to knock yeah. off before. When's the two weeks over? Tomorrow? Well, then I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> just checking. See well, how your schedule was. Uh, I got Brandon on the bush hole and I'm in the trailer. Did I notice some of the stumps gone on North River? I don't know. It looks like the Clifton side is I hope so, because I, I talked, he ain't supposed to give me a price. And he said, he's never given me a price on that yet. All right, keep going. That one? Um, oh, I didn't get a chance to go back on my... Um, I didn't get a chance to go back on my GIS, but did we pay for the wedging on Tanyard and the Clark County side? We didn't wedge on Clark County side. Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, before the turn at Rowley Hampton's house, that's all Clark County. No, that's all ours. No, I didn't. We, we've had this discussion, and I'll go back and I'll, well, yeah, I'll, we, uh, I'll, we print, I'll print that out for you. Okay, that was us, though. That was us. Okay. Down the middle of the road. Yeah. Right in front of Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice of us. We're good people. <laughs> what else you got? Um, let's see. Oh, the most important thing. What? Vacation time. Huh? <laughs> the 12th through the 23rd. September. Well, that's the past two weeks, so we've got no problem. Yeah. Everything will be done. Everything will be done. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on.
Okay, anything else? No, sir. Do you have anything else? Tom Mark? Yeah. Oh, what's the word on battery? Get one or no? Oh, yeah. You want to get one? Yeah, talk about that. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, that was about fiscal office report for the, this meeting. I vote we have um, a resolution to adopt. It's a little unusual than what I usually present. Um, it's um, an amendment of permanent appropriations and a reallocation as well. What? Uh, all within the same. Mm -hmm. Did you not read it? I did read it. <laughs> Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize an amendment to the following permanent appropriation and reallocation. And the uh, permanent appropriation amendment is simply to add $100 to the training services and EMS billing. Because we had a little, little uh, one more ex uh, expenditure creep up. Yeah, because so, yeah, I asked Tom specifically, are we going to need any more? He said, no, oh, yeah, we need this much, whatever. Yeah, I was hoping Alex It's no big deal, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then in uh, doing payroll today, I um, came across the uh, sad but true situation, which was that there wasn't enough money to pay EMS billing payroll. Um, and we're, you know, we're 16 pay periods into 26, so we had 10 more to go. So there's a um, so I basically decreased uh, motor vehicles and AMS billing by twenty five thousand, buildings by twenty five thousand, and machinery equipment and furniture by twenty five thousand, and increased salaries by seventy five thousand to get through. And we're going to need every bit, but we're going to need seventy thousand or whatever to get through. From what I can figure, I mean, it's about you know as you can see in the um, um, in our expenditures in EMS billing what they are every two weeks and they're around seven thousand dollars mm -hmm. payroll. Mm -hmm. So seven thousand times ten with wiggle room. That's a big math there. And where does the so what's not being spent in motor vehicles? Well or we building. appropriated fifty thousand in there and fifty thousand in uh, I think it was um what was the other thing? Buildings and um, uh, 25 and um, machinery, equipment, and furniture, maybe. I think buildings and salaries each have set 50,000 in them. So, so there's it's kind of like it's kind of like Those you know, kind of like, like a savings account. Broad, if you broad know, if you sweet estimations. We we just try and you know stack up some money where we can, especially for motor vehicles because mm -hmm. they're very very expensive. But um, paying paying the folks is. It's kind of like a supplemental appropriation, which is what they used to call it. Like you basically delete some money out of one line item and move it to another. But now they call it reallocation. So that's this. If anybody's interested in making a motion. Is anyone interested in making a motion? Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested in some of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion regarding this motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Uh, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Um, and then um, I met with, I just want to let you all know, I met with uh, the Otarma person, mm -hmm. um, Kathy Gonzalez, and she says she basically visits all, of, all the townships in the state of Ohio every three years. and. Likes to make sure we're all are compliant and our and things that we need to have you know taken care of so that in case we ever get they get sued because we did whatever just all kinds of things um, that she's gonna compile um, and put you know put in a letter for us too with a check you know checklist of things that we there's just a, maybe a couple things that we need to, we need to tweak a little bit but basically we're in pretty good shape so um, that's coming for it was very helpful you know she's just been so. You know, help us out there. She did tell us that there's a, um, we can, there's a couple of grants that are available. Um, one was $500 for the fire department to use towards safety equipment of any kind. Yeah, that's the one that's available every year. Right. And uh, actually, we could use it too if we wanted to, to like get a new safe or do something safety wise. Anyway, 
uh, you know, to to be um, to be uh, continued on that. There'll be a, a better description of everything that um, this Oktarma does for us, can do for us. That's all I have. Thank you. Anything else with this thought, sir? Don't hear anything. Um, anything zoning related without zoning inspector? That just somebody had a zoning question or comment or wanted to uh, make a speech about zoning. This is the time. Hearing none, we'll move to um, standing committee reports. So I met, met, I uh, went to MDRPC and regional planning uh, last month, and regional planning was only about 10 minutes long. There was only one thing on the agenda. It was hardly worth the drive over there. Um, the, and the RPC plan was was very interesting. It had a uh, coordination, a Greater Miami Valley Regional Transportation Coordination Plan, which I don't know if TAC saw that or not, but I think they said they were over there. Um, the Sustainable Business Plan, and uh, um, and I think the most interesting thing I did was kind of off the, uh, we were invited to uh, the opening, grand opening of the. Newest metro, big metro library branch on uh, on the eastern side of town, um, Water Belite, uh, next to uh, uh, Belmont. Belmont, yeah. Uh, a beautiful little library. It was very similar to the to the other new ones that are out there, especially the downtown one. But I, I had a um, and somebody else that I was with had a nice long conversation with a new. Um, Employee of MBRPC who came on at the first of June, and she's a um, she's a long range planner, and she seems to be very competent. Uh, she was assistant village or assistant city manager in Kettering, and we stole her away from them. And, and it's good. I think she's going to be a real asset to, to MBRPC for her, her long range uh, planning ability because MBRPC is. I mean, it's really dedicated to long range, but there's so many projects that they're working on that you know, that, and there's all these deadlines and all these, all these schedules and all these, all these uh, um, reports that you have to make for whatever federal agency is. You know, I don't know how they have time to do any real strong long range planning. So that's what she's going to do, and so it could be very interesting what they, uh, uh, and, and they're trying to become more focused on social issues in the region, not just nuts and bolts transportation. Um, and uh, I commend them for it. So anyway, and then, oh yeah, and the regional plan was just one little subdivision which had been kicked around six ways to Sunday. So that was all I had. Did you get her name? Hmm? Can you give me her contact information afterwards? I certainly can. Um, I'll try. Um, so, that and uh, we talked about CDC to death, so I won't bring that one up anymore. Um, and uh, I stopped and saw the mill last night, and it was seemed to be in good shape. Um, what about the roof? Um, I saw the little spot on the roof that, that Jim was talking about, but I couldn't get close enough to it. So <coughs> I'm not sure how we're going to inspect that, but. You have any trouble mowing it? Yeah. Yeah. A little soft down in the back side. Yeah. Earlier she was like, is it neat? Is it ready? Uh, it's, it's getting there, but like anything else, it's, I'm not okay. it's, right. it's right. probably <laughs> probably be good for a while. All right, so what else we got? Uh, TAC, uh, Clifton? I have four. Uh, there hasn't been a Clifton um, cemetery meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, over the last four months, I've missed, I think there's only been two TAC meetings, and I've not been to them because of a conflict at Antioch. Uh, I no longer have that conflict at Antioch. Uh, I went to a kind of a press conference launch of the uh, complete census committee, mm -hmm. a special meeting of the Chamber of Commissioner, um, and it was actually pretty interesting. The 
Yep. You're a director of the you know, planning commission. Mm -hmm. um, introduced it and spoke about uh, sort of his own history, which really didn't have directly to do with the census, but it was moving. Um, and this, but the importance of local government and how uh, having an accurate census count affects grants and That's, that's really the, all I have to say. Yeah, it, it's amazing all the things that our time <coughs> the census um, uh, reports over the 10 years that you know, everything. So those are my three things, the census committee, the TAC, mm -hmm. uh, and the Clifton Senate. Okay. See, Mark, you've been a little indisposed, but mm -hmm. anything that you've uh, on uh, economic sustainability, uh, no meeting this month in August, but uh, we will get back to it uh, next month. Okay. Um, and as far as uh, interaction with the uh, Queen County Senior Center, um, more than I have wanted to, but uh, but they did a great job in terms of um, installing um, bars and that sort of thing. Is that right? Yeah. Well, that's great. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, they did. Uh, that's a service that they they offer. Well, this is at your house. Mm -hmm. And they did. Uh, in this case, four bars, but I think they do uh, up to five. <coughs> That's nice to know. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move to new business. We have a resolution. Uh, this is 2019-29. This is a resolution uh, which I can't put my finger on. But I'm it's assuming it's <laughs> Clean Ohio one, not, not Ohio Clean. Yes, your assumption is right. I changed three of those. I don't know why they came up that way. But I'll change them again. I do have a resolution? No. Oh, okay. But they asked, um, uh, Glenn Held asked, as part of that grant request, that we send a uh, letter of support for them, and uh, I said we would. Uh, I said I will make one and see if other people would like to sign it. So the letter uh, is quite short, um, and there's a resolution somewhere that supports the letter, but basically says that a public meeting held Monday the 19th Board of Trustees passed a resolution in support of a Clean Ohio Fund grant to improve visitor access of uh, Glen Helen and Yellow Springs. My township considers Glen Helen one of, if not its premier natural public areas in the township. Glen is among the most visited natural area in the state of Ohio, and we support all of Glen Helen projects that are meant to improve or update infrastructure that benefits not just public access, access but the long term viability of the Glen. Respectfully submitted, you, me, and you, you, and you. Oh, I have and the resolution right here. And there it is. Yeah. So, and there, you guys with me. Is there uh, any further? Dis er, is there a motion to uh, adopt resolution 2019-30? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Mr. Crockett moves. Mr. Hollister seconds. Any further discussion regarding the adoption of that resolution? Hearing none, we will vote, please. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Uh, I have another question. That might be in business, maybe it should have been under the fire department. But with the orientation of college students starting on Wednesday, do you have any formal interaction saying, oh, hi, we've had a long standing uh, contact between students and the fire department? Negative. Negative. We used to. Just not worth it, or you haven't been invited. We haven't been invited. Um, we just, we, it's been discussed a couple times, so it's just like we've had that. 
Um, and, but did we have a Miller Fellow this year at some point? Yeah. Did we have a co-op? We had a co-op. And how did that, how did you find him? He came to you? Or you? Um, co-op advisor contacted me, stated that she had a student who would be interested um, in doing it. And then we've had, over the last four years, two other students that were volunteers, or? We have had three students since the new um, I'm asking because I'm uh, part of a group that's planning a picnic. Yellow Springs Community Picnic Welcoming Students on campus September 8th, Sunday afternoon, September 8th. And if someone in uniform wanted to be serving hamburgers <coughs> or be at the grill or something, it would it might be advantageous. Okay. So I'll talk to you more about yeah. that. Uh, and we're also trying to find money to pay for the food. And we're asking groups to put in $50 each, although we may have enough groups that it ends up being $20 each. But, uh, is there, is the uh, Volunteers Association able to do that without trustee action? I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't know because once they become a 501c3, all their ease of getting money changed. So mm -hmm. I would have to well, you might check, check, that check it out your brain and yeah. see. I mean I know like um, under that amount of money one of them could just approve it. But I don't know what kind of restrictions they have. But I'll I'll find out. Anyway, I'm trying to get different groups in town to volunteer to do some of the work and and, and to pay for the food. That's it. No, I'm not asking for any action. Okay. Okay. Um, that was new business. Any further new business? Any old business? Yes. I mean, this was new. I'm not sure. It's kind of new at old. It's called a medium. Medium new old. This is uh, a little lengthy, but. It, Really, I think it needs to be uh, in the public domain. So I'm going to read this. Uh, this is a response by County Auditor David Graham to what was originally sent from Fiscal Officer, Officer Silliman uh, to the uh, to the County Treasurer, who bounced it to the State Treasurer, who bounced it to the County Auditor, who bounced it to the the prosecuting attorney, but uh, the <laughs> issue is such. And that flies. Um, Mr. Graham writes, I've had conversations with several of you, the people I just referred to, regarding these issues. I have included a summary of what has transpired on the property acquired by Miami Tanja. This is the new firehouse property. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. Uh, it says, on April 22nd, 2015, Mr. Stephen Kahn filed a complaint against the continued exemption of the real estate property, real property from taxation with my office. This form was received by the Department of Taxation on uh, May 5th, 2013. For clarification at that time, right state owned the land? Correct. On 5 1 uh, Miami Township purchased several of the parcels. On uh, July 31st, 17, the Department of Taxation ruled to place the impacted parcels back on the tax list uh, dating back to tax year 2015. Now, that's where it gets a little tricky because we owned it at that point, but it went back. I don't know. According to the order, an addition was placed on the tax bill for the impacted parcels on 1918. On 2-14-18, Miami Township filed for exemption on the parcel they acquired. The Department of Taxation held this decision pending the outcome of Wright State's appeal of the Tax Commissioner's decision from back before 5 1 
Now on 7, 17, 19, the Department of Taxation indicated an exemption could not be granted since taxes exist on the property prior to the year for which the exemption is sought. The township could not apply for exemption prior to tax year 2018, page 2019. On August 13, 19, uh, Wright State University applied for an exemption on the parcels for the tax years 2015 through 2017. He says, I have a ton of documentation on information related to these parcels. The Department of Taxation will not approve an exemption if a parcel has taxes for a period prior to which the property could qualify for exemption. I was not part of the negotiations for the parcels acquired by Miami Township, but I would think Wright State would have a duty to disclose the potential taxable status of the parcels. I concur. That's my answer. Uh, I'm reading it so I can the Department of Taxation has given the township 60 days to pay the taxes and provide a new treasurer certification uh, indicating the taxes have been paid. Uh, they will not consider a tax exempt status unless they have treasurer certification indicating there are no taxes uh, uh, owed on no. My personal opinion is this is not a township liability, but taxes follow the property and do not go with the individual owner, thus buyer beware. All the parcels once held by WSU has since, have since been sold. I do not believe their exemption will be approved based on the merits of this case. The Department of Taxation has already ruled once to deny the exemption on the property, uh, which was not being used for an exempt purpose, holding the land for resale does not qualify for an exemption, and the fact that they are not the owner of the property at the time the purchase was made. That doesn't sound right. No. And the fact that they are not the owner of the not, property. Not grammatically. At the time the purchase was made. We're I believe, it when we it. I believe if the thing. delinquent taxes were cleared up, the town's exempt. Thank you. That's brilliant. I believe if the delinquent taxes were cleared up, the township's exemption, exemption application would go through no problem. Right. I included uh, Eli in this email because it's also important to let your legal representative know when you're practicing law without a license. Mm -hmm. Uh, subsequent to that, I uh, asked uh, Ms. Ellis, because uh, she's had this, can, my question is, can we sue Wright State to recover the back taxes? Pretty short but sweet. She writes back, not to sound like a lawyer, but it depends. <laughs> Do you have your land purchase documents? I would have to review those. They should, be, they should have been on notice that the 2015 complaint was filed, so they should have disclosed this as a contingent liability, but agreements would usually control, uh, and it's in here. Also, just because you can sue does not mean you will recover. I know there have been some serious financial fiscal issues at the right state. If you give me the purchase docs, I'll, dra I'll draft a letter asking them to pay. And I, I sent the whole purchase documents. One of the headlines in the paper recently was that uh, right state is proud to announce that they've, they've mm -hmm. upped their um, their savings account, or what do you want to call it, up to sixty million mm -hmm. from thirty million. So they're they're back at you know they're doing much better now. Good. They should be able to squeeze out some tax dollars. So we'll cross our fingers and see if anything comes of that. I don't know what else to do really. But well, I I think it, seriously it, it um, might be worth uh, mentioning to our state representative that this situation exists to the. Chancellor of the Board of Regents that this situation exists. Mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. oh, just. Will you do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, and I also um, <coughs> take um, umbrage with the, the idea that um, you should be criticized for practicing law without a license. Um, because it seems to me that a law should be easily enough understood that a, an individual can interpret it. Was David talking about himself being practicing law without? Yeah. yeah. That's what I took it to, to, yeah. to me. The whole tone of it, it was a <coughs> casual memo mm -hmm. and it was humorous. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But he was also covering his. Covering his <laughs> so at this point, from what I'm gathering, since I kind of started this when I sent that request from the state to the treasurer's office in Kenya, 
I know. Well, I had to know. Um, so are we on a, a holding pattern here now? I mean, I mean, it's it's in the hands of Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. We are you holding, know, but we're not, we're, our 60 days is ticking away. And taxes, new taxes will start being accrued. That if we held, if we waited five years for this to be resolved, and if it went against us, we'd owe five more years of taxes. Mm -hmm. So you're saying for 20, right now, twenty thousand a year or whatever. Yeah, we should just wait and see what happens. <sighs> yeah, briefly. Or should I? I mean, well, yeah, I mean. Well, let's follow it. Me meeting by meeting. We should. Well, we got this letter July fifteenth or something like that. So mm -hmm. they gave us till September, mid through mid September to have proof that we that everything's in arrears, I mean everything's taken care of and we will then possibly be granted exemption. But right now we do have a, a, a couple, it's, this has been going for more than a year. Well, the prosecutor's sending a letter to Wright State, right? Oh, Elizabeth is, yeah. And I think it's, uh, I've just said that I would Apprise our state representative and the Board of Regents Chancellor of the situation. Uh, not expecting them to do anything formal, but to, it might help if they made an inquiry. Okay, well, I just don't want to get into my person don't want to get in trouble. So you guys got to help me out. Well, un unfortunately, <laughs> unlike, know. <laughs> unlike when you make application for exemption, which then stops. The, the process of tax collection at that point until that decision is made, this does not qualify for that. The, the clock and the cash register are ticking. Right, and, and this is, like I said, this has been going on, I think, for more than a year now. I think I, I didn't, I think I was, this started last year. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Because I started, you know, it was last year I contacted the office and said, we should be tax exempt. Right. We made that application. And then you made the application, mm -hmm. yeah, and now it's just still, well, anyway, I just need to know when to pay to keep us out of that, that trouble. If, but we, as, if we need to pay, and then maybe, I don't know. As former trustee Lamar Spratman would say, and I'll be channeling his voice, mm -hmm. if we pay these to yeah. get them off the hook, we're not getting them back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, well. Any further old business? A motion to adjourn. I so move. So move, second, and by acclamation. Okay. Done.